Thank you, Michael and Kathleen, to join me for an interview today. It is our hope and prayer for this interview that our congregation may put a face to the name and get to know you better at a personal level. More importantly, they'll be able to pray for you regularly as your supporter. And before we begin, let me introduce you to our church audience. It is my honor to be here with Michael and Kathleen Carter today. There are MTW missionaries laboring in Nagoya, the fourth largest city in Japan. This March marks their 10th anniversary in the field. God gifted both Michael and Kathleen with ability to learn Japanese in a short amount of time and equipped them to speak it well so that they can make disciples and reach out to the community. They are also parents of four children, Tobin 10, Elizabeth 8, Maddie 6, and Abigail 1. Welcome, Cutters. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Okay, so would you tell us briefly about your ministry highlights? Yeah, so as Mariko said, we've been here coming on 10 years. And so a lot, of course, has happened. Um, but ministry in Japan looks a lot different than it does uh, in the States. It's a lot uh, slower, um, not as fast moving. But within that, so some of the highlights that we've experienced too might look a little bit different. Um, but for us, I think some highlights include uh, graduating language school, which uh, might not sound like much, but um, learning Japanese has been one of the most difficult things that uh, we've done. So we did two full years in language school before even starting ministry. So finishing that and then being able to jump into our second highlight, which was an internship at Shiga Church, <clears throat> which um, we've been working since um, then at this local church, um, first as intern, and then we worked there as missionaries, uh, preaching, leading Bible studies, um, just getting to know people in the community, events, English classes, just a lot of things through that church. And, uh, and the big part of that being a highlight is that <clears throat> from that internship, from that partnership came a uh, church planting work. And so we are church planting out of Shiga Church as our partner. And that is a pretty rare way to do it in Japan, to work from a local church and to plant out of a local church. So that's been a huge blessing, a huge highlight. Um, and then um, just the different ministries that God has given to us. Kathleen has or had a great Bible study in Okazaki where we did language school with a lot of uh, ladies there um, that she had met. And from that, some had uh, professed faith and wanted to be baptized from that Bible study and um, just doing prayer meetings. Um, a person who's being trained to be an elder at Shiga Church was a member of English class and uh, became a Christian through Shiga. So it's just a lot of those kinds of ministry highlights as well. Hey, the, the final highlight that we were talking about today is um, actually today we uh, heard from the last person who's going to join the vision team for our church plant. So we are actually starting um, worship just with the vision team this April um, and then hope to launch full worship in about 10 months to a year. Uh, but Ooh. the fact today um, we actually have a vision team is a huge blessing from God. And so we're really excited that has come all together today. We got the final commitment. Um, and so to have a vision team is really, um, it's, it's really exciting and really terrifying mm -hmm. all at the same time. <laughs> we're, we're ready to, to church plant and, and we're ready to go. So um, that is also just a great highlight. That, um, How large kind of is the vision team? How large? Uh -huh. Yeah, so um, it's 20 to 20, 20 to 25 with children. There's um, uh, three families that are um, missionaries. One Japanese family. The elders, we have three elders in their family of Shiga, and then the pastor and Shiga are also serve on the, the vision team. So, and then a bunch of kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. So it's generational. It is yeah. very good. Very generational. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, if you have um, any funny stories, that would be great. Um, have you made any um, cultural mistakes while in Japan? Yeah, it's, <laughs> excuse me, this isn't so much a cultural mistake, and but um, we were 
not too long since moving to Okazaki. We've only been in Japan at that point, maybe a month, um, maybe less. And uh, we had to get gas for the car. This was maybe the second or third time I've ever gotten gas here. And it was the first time going to a uh, full service station. So they have self-service and full service. Full service, the gas station attendant washes your windows and pumps the gas for you. And so uh, we needed gas. There was one there, so I stopped. Um, now, if anyone has been to Japan, you know that anytime you go into a restaurant, they give you these hot napkins where you wash your hands, wipe your face and things like that. So the gas station attendant comes, I roll down my window, tell him to put regular and he hands me a towel. Now, being that the only time I've received a towel is when I use it to wash my hands and face, I figure that's what this is for. So I take the towel and I stop and notice it's a little bit dirty looking, but I push that outside of my mind and I proceed, you know, take it, I wash my hands, I, you know, wash my face. Um, and hand it back to him in the face, this guy's face was just like, <laughs> just staring at me like this, but I think, huh, here you go, thank you, and hand it to him and roll up my window, and um, and later on, you know, I tell Kathleen, and she says, no, 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 that was to wash the dashboard and your <laughs> steering wheel to wipe the dust off the car, that's why it was dirty, is because to wipe the dust off the car, not to wipe your face, so I wiped my face with this dirty, dusty rag that everyone used to wipe their car with because I thought that's what you used to wipe your hands and your face like you do in the restaurant. So I've never been back to that uh, gas station. The whole two years were in Okazaki. I never went back and I've never been back since. So that's the one mistake I've done. Yeah. Sure, he still remembers. Back when you were breaking out a little bit, would you repeat? Uh, no, I'm, I'm sure that attendant had a great story for his family. <laughs> No, I mean, when you move to a foreign country, I mean, I, I, the, you're making mistakes all the time. So, and it's it's actually rare that you know you're making one. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually did not know about that um, gas station towel. So I oh, really? I was, I was wondering if I had told you before. Yeah. But right. no, yeah, they, now I know though. And now I know what that towel is for. So I use it right every time now. Okay, yeah. Um. Hmm. How has COVID affected your ministry and what's been the biggest challenge and what's been the unforeseen blessing? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's the same in the States and, and when we're in the States with COVID going on, all the churches experience this too. And mm -hmm. really the stage we're in now is just outreach and evangel evangelism is the main thing we're doing, getting into the community meeting people, gathering people. And it's really hard to do that when you can't meet people and gather people. And so that's been really the biggest adjustment and challenge is how do you do outreach? How do you evangelize? How do you have gatherings, events when you can't do those things? And so we've had to kind of think and readjust a lot of things. Um, and that's been the biggest challenge um, because a lot of the ministries we used to do, like our concert series or, you know, events like that, um, Bible studies here, meeting here, um, art exhibits, those kinds of things, uh, we just haven't been able to do. And so we've had to kind of rethink these, but as oftentimes as God works in the challenges are blessings. Um, now, the challenges of not, for example, English events, we used to do big English events, but we've had to really pare those down to limit the number of people. Um, the blessing in that has been that gives the helpers and the staff really opportunities to focus and on the, the kids who come there. So with less kids, there's more personal time, there's more time to talk with each individual child, there's more time to get to know them. Whereas with a big event, you're just trying to like, juggle all these plates and make sure it runs smoothly and not that one-on-one -on -one time. And so that's been a real hidden blessing that we never foresaw until it happened. Um, one more, one more, and then I'll let you talk, is um, we had to do move to Zoom like a lot of people had for Bible studies and things like that. And, and church at Shiga still is on Zoom. But within that, a lot of people who have not been able to attend now are able to attend. Um, Kathleen does a child rearing Bible study online. And um, 
and a lot of people who haven't been able to show up or meet now have, and she can talk a little more about that. Though. Yeah, I mean, it was just a study that um, I had really hoped to do a while ago. We had kind of a baby boom in our church of five babies born in one year, um, and so for Japan, that's a big deal, and uh, yeah, and you know, everybody's busy. Nobody can get together trying to arrange people, trying to arrange child care. Uh, but then actually while we were in America, one of the moms reached out to me and said, hey, I really want to do this. What would it take? And um, and I said, well, if, if you'll partner with me and do it with me, I, I'd be happy to do it. And and so it's a great learning experience for her of how do you facilitate something like this? Uh, we kind of threw it out there to some of the moms and we had seven people, um, a couple of non-Christians, uh, some Christians in the group, some who profess faith, but we were not really sure where they're at. Uh, and it's just been a, an immense blessing. They've wanted to meet almost every week. Um, I would say we've met uh, the, the testimonies after we just finished our first curriculum. We've been going for about nine months now. Uh, we're just really encouraging the non-Christians just saying things like, I didn't know the Bible was actually applicable to like my life. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of the Bible. I've never really heard of Christianity. Um, but it's so applicable to all facets of my life and relationships uh, the Christians just saying, I, I didn't know like that you apply scripture to every part of our life. So uh, yeah, it's just been really a blessing that through Zoom, we've been able to to gather and have these times and, and people desiring more of that. And so hopefully when we get off Zoom, you know, that it will become more of a priority for people. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay. Um how about over the last 10 years of your ministry in, in Nagoya, how have you seen God working in big ways in Japan or in Nagoya? So personally, how we've seen, and again, as I said before, ministry here looks uh, differently. And so I think rather than seeing God work in big ways, we've seen God work in intricate ways, if that makes sense. So what I mean by that is, we see little connections and threads of God working five years ago that have paid off now. And an example of this is we, as I mentioned, we were doing an intern and working in a local church, Shiga Church. And one of the priorities of the pastor of that church is getting me involved in the presbytery here in Japan, in the, in the uh, Presbyterian Church of Japan. And so I was able to go to pastor's meetings, presbytery meetings, um, different events that the presbytery does throughout the year. Uh, really get to know all the different pastors in the presbytery. Um, one of those pastors um, of a church, one of his members is a principal of a local all-girls Christian high school. And so she had mentioned just kind of off the cuff to him that they were looking for an English teacher. Him, because of the relationship we had, because of our pastor and, you know, our time at Shiga knew about us and mentioned us, said, well, why don't you contact Michael Carter? Maybe he can you know, teach for you and vouch for us. So she contacted me and, um, and I was able to teach at that, at that school uh, for a year. And the significance of that is in this community, that school is very prestigious, very well respected. And if I say, well, I teach at King Joe High School, that's an automatic in, that's an automatic trust. That's an automatic, oh, he's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so not only that, but through me, teaching at that school and having connections with that school, the seminary had a short-term team from Texas come and they were able to put on a full day program of evangelism where they gave testimonies, they spoke at chapel, they went to different classrooms and, um, and did different um, games with the students and, and put on a, a production about the, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And two girls, you know, were crying at the end and wanted to, to become Christians at, and, and, and now, you know, then we had to go back to the States, but I wrote the principal and said, thanks for the opportunity. If you need anyone again, um, my wife would, would love to teach there. Um, I probably won't, um, but my wife would love to teach there. And she wrote back and said, actually, we're looking for someone starting in April. And so Kathleen just had her interview there this morning and we'll start teaching there in April. So that connection can continue. And so that, that intricacy, that web of relationships and and fruit and things that are really indirect in a lot of ways that God is working that's how we see God working in our own personal ministry rather than 
oh, uh, you know, 50 people came to Christ today or there are 30 baptisms, that kind of big way. We don't really see in Japan, but the workings like that, the intricacy that is is what we see. And that's been really exciting. Um, I would say the two things that came to my mind is one, um, there is a, a new arts ministry in town uh, led by somebody in our uh, mission. And uh, that's been really helpful for us as we think about arts and in church planning and how it applies to church planning. And that's really reached out to a lot of people. It's connected with a lot of people who don't really connect naturally to the church in Japan. Uh, and so even just a friend of mine from language school um, who is Japanese uh, just said, hey, I have this guy who wants to meet some Americans. Can I introduce you? And I said, well, I think you should introduce him to my husband. I don't know if I could meet with him. Uh, and so Michael met with this guy and he actually came to America, did a homestay and was really moved. And um, after that, we kind of supported him. He was an artist. Uh, and then we introduced our art uh, missionary friend to him and then through that our art missionary friend joined that group um, and now has wonderful relationships with a lot of those people sharing the gospel with a lot of those folks um, and so again we didn't really necessarily we had the opportunity with one gentleman but then um, you know another missionary now is in that group and very integral in that group and uh, in sharing Christ with the group and, and the leader and so to see that uh, is really neat. Some some more connections like Michael was talking about. Um, I think the last thing that has just been really huge is space is a premium in Japan. Uh, and so I, when we were in Blacksburg, we just laughed at how much space the churches have. I think where uh, you guys have your kind of cafeteria is probably bigger than our whole church and it's three <laughs> stories. So, um, but yeah, so we really needed space and we just prayed and prayed for years for space, rental space, anything. And uh, then we even stopped looking for space and we found one day, I don't know why I was online and we found a place and we were more looking for a home for ourselves but we found this building in downtown Nagoya. We were like 15 minute walk from just center city. And uh, it, it was crazy. We were like, there's no way our denomination can afford this. There's no way that we can raise money for this building. And we even called up to kind of the missionary headquarters and they said, oh, we've never done a project this big. Like, wow, I don't know. You guys better have some big support from down in Nagoya. And um, you know, the elders and the Shiga church pastor was like, yeah, no, we definitely can put together, you know, a bond project and we can definitely buy that land. And if you guys can try to help fundraise to remodel it, cause it was a complete fixer upper. I mean, we gutted the whole thing, three stories. And uh, we prayed and prayed and we're like, this is really impossible, mm -hmm. but this is your will be done. And um, so unbelievably we went to look at the building i think in april and by october we had bought the land mm -hmm. and by the following april it had been fully renovated um and the renovation was fully paid in cash uh we have a bond project with the japanese church but basically because of michael alluded to this earlier the relationships that he had in the presbytery uh the relationships he had with the churches uh, they really just supported us in, in our ministry. They supported Shiga Church and Shiga Church's ministry. And that's years, that's, you know, 50 years of Shiga Church being a church and those relationships that you build. Mm -hmm. And now we have this incredible space. And so here we are with the church plant that has beautiful space in downtown Nagoya to use. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's just, it, it never ceases to amaze me when I walk in into the building. We, we live on the top floor now just because it's open and we wanted to maximize the space, but uh, it just never ceases to amaze me um, that God has provided this type of location for us. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the biggest thing in missions is you're, you're constantly reminded you're working out of your weakness. Um, I mean, nothing that we've done is because we're special. Nothing is we've done is because we're really gifted. It's just a constant dependent that God's going to show up. We pray big and uh, he, he shows up and his Holy Spirit just works. And so um, I think that that's what keeps us going. And that's why we think, you know, there might actually be a church someday. <laughs> we pray to that end. So. Exciting. Exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. And I had oh. a great time and, and I hope we can do this again sometime. <laughs> Yes, so thank know, you yeah. so much for your support. Yes, thank I'm you. I'm so grateful.